Have a Nice Death is an early access 2D platform and action roguelike, and it feels like it has potential to be one of the most popular roguelites of 2023. I've covered this game quite a bit on this channel, and really, it's always a great time being able to revisit this game whenever new content becomes available. But in November of 2022, Have a Nice Death got announced for the Nintendo Switch with a release date of March 22nd, 2023, which means the game will be coming out of early access after just over a year. What I want to do is look at every single early access update and see what the game has added since its early access access launch. Let's see how this game has evolved for the better, or maybe for the worse. Have a Nice Death's first trailer was shown at the Game Awards in December of 2021, and really, it was one of the highlights of that entire show. It was announced for an early access release on Steam on March 8th of 2022, which was close to a three-month wait. And when this game dropped, I made a video on this channel instantly talking about the game, but we'll go over it again, of course, quickly. This first release has you go through five floors, with each floor having six levels total. Except for the final floor, during this part of the release, it was wasn't fully done yet, so when the game came out, you only had one level before fighting the final boss. Each floor had its own main boss, and every floor, minus the last one, also had a mini boss you could run into. The rewards from each floor could be a room with some health items, the game's currencies of Solary and Prismium, curses, which are buffs in the entire run, shops to buy spells, healing items, weapons, really all the basic stuff you'll have in a roguelite. Your weapons in a run, on the other hand, were your scythe, and then you had two slots for a weapon with a traditional cooldown, and a weapon that was used with mana, which is basically magic. I'll say during this first build, I found some absolutely insane magic builds and easily want to run with that. The Vlad Saw was definitely the most overpowered at this time with the Frenzy Meter attacks. Each weapon and spell has an ultimate attack once the Frenzy Meter is full, and this attack on the Vlad Saw during this stage of the game fully healed and increased your health. Safe to say, easy way to win. And that was the inside of a run during this phase, and let me tell you, the outside of the run didn't really have that much, but we're still covering it. You collect the currency in guts inside of a run, which allows you to buy more spells and weapons that could spawn, and spawn more food items in a fridge. You would see this fridge after every single floor and would only get one item in that fridge per run, so you had to choose wisely. But the item changed with every floor you went on. And really, during this first phase, my biggest complaint with the game wasn't like lack of items or lack of content or anything like that. It was mostly the inconsistencies with items, how I would never get any healing items when I needed them, or I'd have too many weapons or anything like that and, you know, a decent amount of glitches, but it was early access, so I had some confidence. The next major update would happen on May 10th of 2022, so about two months after the initial release, and this update was the infrastructure development update. They did have a small forum post in March talking about the state of the game, but nothing really to cover there is they just talked about the smaller bug fixes release and talked about the next update. It is funny though, in this post, they do say how a lot of people said they weren't getting enough healing received in the initial build, so I'm glad to see I wasn't alone there. Now, back to the update. It added a lot of content for a first major update. The replayability was a little bit higher, but nothing too crazy. I'd say I'd probably sink like 10 hours or so into this update before feeling fulfilled and stopping until then, you know, the next major update. But here's what was added. We of course had some bug fixes, dialogue text added, some new spells were added, and even an in-game bug reporter got added in, which is always a good thing to have. Now, here's the big stuff that we saw get introduced. World 1 had a new mini boss added who's supposed to be a janitor named El Clean, and I'll say even to this day, I struggle with this guy more than I do with Brad, who's the main boss in World 1. But it was nice having two mini bosses you could potentially face in this first area. Next, World 2 added two new mini bosses named X4H and Richard J baron they have some lore behind them but i'm not here to explain that these were two new fights that added a lot of flavor to the second world and then world three and four didn't have anything new with this update but where the most changes happened was world five this time around world five was now fully complete had new enemies and a new mini boss as well named camille flage i probably said that wrong who first time around was harder than the final boss but it was good to see the final world fully complete so we can have a full run of the game and depending on how fast you went through floors a run could take you about an hour or so at this pace maybe four 45 minutes. That wasn't all the content added by the team over at Magic Design Studios though. They also added a contract system before the run started where you can choose a contract to complete in a run and get rewarded if you complete it or a penalty. They added a new rest floor as well which allowed you to heal yourself in the middle of a run. It's a very nice addition but I will say it's not like a full heal. It's like 15 to 20 health. It's better than nothing. And then lastly they added vending machines in the break rooms after boss fights which allowed you to purchase a Nemo to heal on items with Solary. This first major update showed me that this game was going in the right direction. I was pretty happy with it. Great that I only played it for about eight hours or so, 
but everything they added was pretty good. At this point though, I still felt that builds based around mana and obtaining curses built around buffing mana was an easy way to win, but that didn't deter away from the experience. I had a lot of confidence for this game's future, but this next major update they did may have been my favorite one, and I will say they knocked it out of the park with this one. The fast food update is the next one, which released July 7th of 2022, another two months in between major updates, and these updates have a lot of content, which is pretty impressive. Of course, before the update, they had a state of the game forum post discussing what their plans were. This time around, their main focus was around trying to rebalance the absurdity of mana related builds and how powerful they were, which I was happy to hear. The cloak weapons, the ones with cooldowns, just did not feel as good as the mana related items, and the builds were just insane with them. Hell, I killed a mini boss without even moving, that's how good those mana builds were. But what we care about the most is what was added during this fast food update. As usual, let's first look about what was added inside of a run. They didn't add anything new to the worlds already made, but they added a whole new world with new enemies, a new mini boss, and a new regular boss, and it's technically World 2-2. With this update, they allowed you to choose between two areas for World 2 and two areas for World 3. World 3 and 4 from previous updates are now the two options for World 3, and the final world, the fifth world, became the fourth world. That may sound a little confusing, but I am 100% on board for this change. It adds for more variety inside of a run, letting you pick between which worlds you want to go to. Plus, in the future, there's going to be more updates, so we don't know what else is going to be added. Also, each area apparently upgrades certain curses more, which I didn't notice personally, but the variety was nice to say the least. This update also added a few more curses, weapons, 23 new contracts to choose from in the beginning of a run, and most importantly, it added difficulty enhancers to the game with breakdowns. If you clear a run, you can unlock breakdown one, and if you clear breakdown one, you unlock breakdown two, and so on and so forth. And let me tell you, breakdowns added a lot of challenge to this game. Grant that I still only got to like break down three. I had a lot going on in life at the time, but this edition was incredible. I only got to like break down three, like I said, but once the game fully releases, I am so excited to go back and play a lot more. I have a lot more time to dedicate to it this time around. And really these breakdowns just add so much replayability. Also, this update had a lot of balance changes with the bosses and mini bosses, but like we don't need to dive into those deep analytics and stats, do we? No. Next major update to hit was the natural disasters update, which released on September 28. This update added a lot more things to the game that really make a run better in my eyes. As per usual, the devs had a state of the game post before this update to outline what some of their plans were, and they mostly talked about updating the frenzy on a lot of spells and weapons, and reading the patch notes, you see that they did that and fixed a lot of bugs. Way to go, devs. But let's get to the big stuff that this update added. The major thing that was added with this update was a whole new world. Again, the natural disasters department, which is now the new final end into the game, bringing a run back to five worlds world's total instead of four, which I'm still not sure of as of making this video. I have cleared the game in this department and the run was just over an hour, so not too bad, but I still felt a four world run was a good length. I would think having a choice between the natural disasters department and the modern warfare department would be a good choice to end a run. Four worlds total, all of the worlds you get to choose between two options besides the first world. I thought it would be a good way to do it, but hey, you know, five worlds, four worlds, still a fun run, about an hour long, it's whatever. But this area added new enemies, a mini boss, and a main boss, of course. No other worlds really got changed during this update, but a new scythe was added with the Bill Scythe. A longer ranged weapon, two new spells were added as well, 13 new curses, new food items in the fridge, and a new subworld in the addictions department, which is one of the World 3 areas. And they even added a new floor to find in your runs with challenge rooms. There's still a lot more that this update added, and we're going to talk about that right now. This just isn't like the major stuff. These are just nice additions, I think. You can now access an encyclopedia in the hub world, which showcases all the new curses you've acquired so far. I'm pretty Pretty sure you can access all the weapons and spells as well, but the patch notes only said curses. You also have a new training room in the hub world as well to test any weapons and spells you want. And finally, this update added a run summary screen you can access after a run is done. And it breaks down everything that happened. Pretty nice stuff, I'd say. Another major update adding a lot of content, making this game feel even more complete. What a steal for $15, $20, however much it is. It's getting a price hike once it fully releases. That's how it goes. But we still had one more major update happen on December 10th, which was the Executive Decisions update. And in terms of major content added, I'll say this update added the least amount. But to be fair, there's already seven fully completed worlds, an array of curses, spells, and weapons, and there's like seven starting sites. So don't let this update fool you. There's still a good amount to talk about. And as usual, we had a couple extra forum posts before this update. Firstly, in October, there was a small cosmetic update that allowed you to decorate your hub world with Halloween decorations. Nothing too crazy. And then a usual state of the game where the devs state the plans with scythe changes, polishing the game, and making it easier for newer players. When the state of the game was posted, the game had already 
already been announced for the Nintendo Switch like a couple weeks before, I'm pretty sure, on an Indie Direct. So this would probably be the last major update. It may not have added any new worlds, but it did add a new boss and mini boss. But the main boss is apparently a new variation of the World 1 boss, Brad. And the new mini boss is a secret one. I have yet to fight either of them because I didn't even know they were added. I didn't read these patch notes until I made this video. Sorry. So not much to say about them, but new variations always cool outside of those bosses the next biggest change was the difficulty of the game they added a new difficulty option called beginner mode to help newer players and then five new breakdown levels which are the difficulty enhancers they added a lot of smaller things that don't seem to be covered too in depth like new spells weapons over 50 new rooms apparently that might seem like overkill but the best change from this update was reworking the upgrade system with the scythe and actually allowing you to pick between two random scythes to start your run in a totally new way to upgrade it and it can be upgraded three times i felt this was such a nice improvement as the previous way of getting a new scythe cost a prismium which is the more valuable currency and then spending solary upgrading the scythe picked with prismium it cost a lot of money and always made it harder to upgrade your spells and weapons so this allows you to focus on upgrading everything more i feel and then lastly one more thing they added with this update which i was kind of surprised to see in this game i didn't know how they would implement it but it was meta progression after every run you gain xp and level one up unlocks you new things that'll benefit your run like starting with a free cursory roll unlocking an elevator skip to the first boss free heals to start a run with and they all stack it seems i will say a few things confuse me about this meta progression like what does this bleed stuff do if unlocked permanently it just doesn't really make sense are they curses locked behind the meta progression and then you can finally unlock them once you you know get the meta progression done or like what what's going on with them do you start a run with bleed it doesn't really make a lot of sense those aspects of it but overall it's a really nice change i'd say and really that's everything that's changed with have a nice death since day one of early access it's been really fun seeing how much this game has evolved and how much has actually been added for free remind you that the game will probably get like a five dollar price hike once it gets into the 1.0 launch but it's been really fun to see and i'm excited to i'm excited to i'm excited to finally play it to be honest but before i quickly talk about the launch i want to point out a few smaller changes that i've noticed while playing recently compared to my first time playing when the game first came out you could only have two extra slots for your weapons and spells but they did add a way to hold a third item that can be sold or swapped around with whatever you're using that's just a nice little change get an extra item you can sell it for like 10 20 solary swap around your items because you're not feeling something perfect change also healing items and really items as a whole just seem to spawn much more and makes the game feel so much more balanced i'll say it doesn't seem like they added any new dropped items since last year which is a little disappointing but the items available are quite helpful and along with the items dropping more frequently it feels like the main currency solary also drops a lot more allowing you to spend more money in shops and upgrades making a run more balanced and it's a lot more fun and then speaking of items again bosses also drop an item after each victory and that gives you 20 extra max hp for that run which is very nice considering how unforgiving and challenging this game can be you think that's it no there's still a few more get ready what, what should i speak on next cooldowns on weapons have been lowered drastically making them much more viable when the game first came out you had no reason to pick up weapons with a cooldown as mana spells were so much more broken my last runs that i've done recently i was picking up weapons to see how they felt and most weapons felt really good and my runs made it quite far or i won i'd say having a build with one spell and weapon can work more times than not and lastly the final little change i've noticed is just the game as a whole feels a lot smoother with combat and everything imagine a game comes in 1.0 after a one year of early access and the fighting feels exactly the same and there's still a bunch of glitches that would be incredibly awkward what more is there to say this game launches into 1.0 on march 22nd 2023 and i know i'll be streaming it a good amount and enjoying it i highly recommend buying it on switch or steam the nintendo switch is already home to a lot of great roguelites that i can name off the top of my head darkest dungeon hades enter the gungeon dead cells rogue legacy 2 the, the list goes on and it's getting one more added with have a nice death it's sad you can't really get achievements on the switch like you will be able to do on steam but if you're not into achievement it's not that big of a deal the developers over at magic design studio have been hard at work this past year and i'm very happy seeing how much progress has been made and i'm very happy i played for about 40 hours during the early access cycle <laughs> 40 hours ain't that much but i had a lot of fun with this game and i hope you do too if you end up buying it thanks for watching of course like and subscribe if you uh, liked it and comment if you're gonna be buying have a nice death or if you have any questions on the game i'll be happy to answer I'm not sponsored i just think it's a game that deserves to have a little extra spotlight on it and also huge shout out to the people that support me on patreon still you all are the best. You're better than everybody else. Don't tell anybody that, though. And thanks for supporting on Patreon. 
and I will see you next time.